Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of your JFR, as today we're going to be talking about Series 3 as the Toronto Blue Jays went up against the Oakland Athletics, as uh, this was a pretty entertaining series, as we were able to pull away with a 2-1 to one series victory over the Athletics. Uh, it was pretty entertaining, one horrible game though, uh, where the Blue Jays did lose, it was horrible fucking umping, I mean, my god. What were the umps on? Were they on, like, some ketamine? Or, like, what the fuck were they on? Like, I don't know, man. Like, their balls... Like, their strikes that they were calling, like, should have been balls. Like, I, I don't know, man. They were horrible throughout the entire night. And just very, very bad. I, I cannot believe... And probably the main reason why we did lose this game. Because, honestly, a lot of the strikes that... Or a lot of the strikes that, you know, were called should have been balls. But, you know... <sighs> Because, you know, Gorel Jr., I mean, the guy got, like, striked out massively by the fact that it was just way outside. It was all the way in outer space. Should have been a ball, but it was a strike. I, I don't know how. Even Charlie Montoya got kicked out of this game. It was it was crazy. But then the game that happened today, uh, Alec Manoa was insane. So we're going to get into all that, though. I'd like to just say, if you are new to the channel, though, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. That'll be very much appreciated, boys. So let's get in the game one as the Toronto Blue Jays went up against the Oakland Athletics and walked away with a massive 4-1 to one victory. This was a game where Ross Stripling took the start as uh, we're kind of going with a six-starter kind of strategy, which... Actually, he's kind of cool, you know, it kind of gives some break to the other guys, so we started Ross Shuffling in this game tonight, and he honestly did pretty good. Four innings, he only gave up two hits, three strikeouts, he was really good, he kind of um, got a lot of, he threw a lot of pitches to start off the game too, it seemed like a lot of the Oakland Athletics were fighting off tough pitches, fouling off a lot of balls, and sometimes even getting on base, but we did a pretty good job of, you know, maintaining it and, you know, smacking dingers as well as we'll get into that summary of this game. So Guerrero Jr. homered his fifth home run of the season as this one was a solo home run to put up the Blue Jays 1-0 to start the game. Oh, and what a starting, excuse me, what a game, what a start it was for the Blue Jays as Guerrero Jr. was able to launch a 428-foot bomb out of the park here for the Toronto Blue Jays to put us up 1-0. And then Espinal doubles on a shrub ground ball as uh, Ramil Tapio was able to score from first. He had some super speed as uh, that was a big one to put us up 2-0. And then right after that, Pinder was able to get a nice ground ball up at the top of the sixth on uh, Adam Simber as he was able to get Tony Kemp to score in from second there to make it a pretty close game, 2-1. to one. And then Zach Collins scored in uh, Lourdes Guerrero Jr. on a nice single. And then Lourdes Guerrero Jr. finished it off the game, getting a nice double to put the Blue Jays up 4-1 to one and getting a nice W over the Oakland Athletics as this was a pretty good game. Do not know why they took out Tapio. I know they put in Kirk because it was a good matchup against one of the... Guys, I think it was either Jackson or Cleric or whatever it may have been. Um, they put they put in Kirk uh, instead of having Tapio. But even though Tapio was having a really good night, he was two for two on the night. Uh, he uh, was just he had he he was one of the guys that cashed in that run or you know ran in to get that run. Uh, I was by a nice you know hit by I think it was Espinal. Yes, the double by Espinal. Um, but I'm not too sure why they took out and put in Kirk. I know Kirk has been kind of struggling to start off the season. Uh, he hasn't been able to get contact, and maybe that will come with time. But Kirk was, you know, Captain Kirk last year. He was that guy that, you know, put up some big dingers last year, eight home runs, an average of 242. He's off to a little bit of a slow start this year. So we'll have to see if he's able to, you know, get back into that form. And I think even like Buck Martinez and shout out to my man, Buck Martinez. I hope he's doing all right and is able to pull through with cancer. As you guys don't know, um, the last game that happened uh, just yesterday, um, he unfortunately has cancer and he'll be taking a leave from doing the Blue Jays games, which is very, very saddening. And I hope uh, Buck will be able to make it through it. And you got this, buddy. Fucking beat the shit out of that cancer, buddy. Um, but moving forward, uh, the pitching staff for the Toronto Blue Jays had a really good night. Tim Meza was the only guy that gave up an earned run, uh, and he did really good. Simber had a good night. Garcia had a good night. Richards, our starting pitcher in Stripling. Romano even got his fifth save of the, the year as well. He looked really good as well. So what a great start to the series. We pick up a big victory, but then once again, we take another loss uh, as we keep winning and losing, winning and losing. Uh, but we get a big W over the Oakland Athletics, uh, or a big loss as we lose 7-5. to five. Uh, Ryu was in this game. 
rough game for Ryu. He really did not have the strongest night in the world. And I think that's a big note to talk about that Ryu had a bit of a rough night here for the Toronto Blue Jays, giving up five earned runs and four innings of work. Also giving up six hits and a big dinger, uh, which we'll be getting into talking about the summary of this game as uh, the bottom of the first, uh, Guerrero Jr., uh, reaches on a uh, fielder's choice, uh, letting uh, you know Ramiel Tapio score once again. He he has major speed uh, as uh, Tapio was on the third there and was able uh, to score him to get a nice ribby to put us up one nothing to start off the game. And then you know the belting started happening from the Athletics as the top of the second Sheldon Noose singles on a ground ball, letting uh, Sean Murphy scores and getting Noose to second as well. Uh, and then moving forward, then Kevin Smith doubles. Uh, with a sharp fly ball to left field, getting Noose to score. And then uh, Bathing Court, he's, uh, he hits a ground world double, which then lets Kevin Smith score. And then Sean Murphy in the top of the third gets a big old two-run home run to put up the Athletics up 5-1. to one. And uh, definitely not the way that we wanted. But then we started rallying back. Chapman's got a two-run home run. And then Zach Collins getting his first home run of the year was able to rally back and tie up the game until the top of the ninth. Where Christian Back was able to homer a big home run off of Julian May Julian May Merriweather. And uh, that was it for the Toronto Blue Jays as we lose in the game. 7-5 to five, where the ump, like I was saying, was an absolute trash bin. Um, Jeff Nelson was absolutely horrible. I mean, the amount of calls that he missed. He had like a 68% of, you know, ball, uh, strike accuracy. It was... Absolutely dumbfounding, and uh, the next game was a little bit better, but there was still a lot of strikes that, without a doubt, missed the target and should have been strikes. But moving forward, let's get into the last game here as uh, Alec Manoa show, baby. I mean, this guy, Alec Manoa, is insane. Uh, the guy's pitch, the guy's delivery, his, his slider, just every pitch that Alec Manoa has is fucking nasty, man. You watch the movement of these pitches where it's like, it looks like it's going to be in the strike zone and then it just drops like a bullet, just drops like a nuke. And you're like, what? Like, how does this guy do that type of movement is just beyond me. And Alec Manoa just had a beautiful night. Six innings of work, only gave up two on runs, six strikeouts was absolutely amazing for the Toronto Blue Jays as, you know, we walked away with a 4-3 uh, victory defeating the A's in this series. But... Let's get into the scoring as give huge props to George Springer running this one out. I think this was Bo Bichette who hit a nice one getting George Springer to second. But then Lourdes Gurrell Jr. Uh, with a sacrifice fly was able to get George Springer to score and putting us up one nothing to begin the game. And then Espinal singles getting Zach Collins to score from second as well. So that puts us up 2 to nothing there at the bottom of the second. And in the bottom of the third, Matt Chapman with a, a nice single sharp line drive, is able to get Lourdes Gurrell Jr. to score as well, putting us up 3 to nothing. And the only fuck-up that Manoa had was letting Stephen Bott homer as he kind of laid it over the top of the plate, and Bott just took it right out of the park. I mean, even Bott was surprised that he was able to get a big home run on Alec Manoa, who was looking amazing throughout the night. Um, and then the last score was Matt Chapman, who reached on a fielder's choice, uh, and it was, of course, a big error by Kevin Smith. I think he threw it over the first baseman or something like that happened. But we were able to walk away with a 4-3 to three victory over the Oakland Athletics. Um, like I was saying, Manoa played amazing. Our bullpen had a really good night, too. Simber did really well. Romano had his sixth save of the season as well. Uh, we did not have to even use very much of our bullpen, even though we had a lot of guys that were well-rested and ready to go, especially since we have a break day as well on Monday. Uh, so, you know, we're able to take a little bit of a break day. But honestly, the bats, they weren't, you know, swinging big time. We weren't able to get any home runs. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was quiet throughout the night. But Bichette, uh, he's been a quiet guy over the, since the begin, uh, since the start of the season. He's only had 10 hits at 45 at-bats. He has an average of 222. He's been a little slow, uh, slow to start, but expect Bo Bichette to start picking it up. He was looking like he was starting to pick up a little bit of that, you know, that swing, starting to get that energy back underneath of him. So I think we're going to start seeing a little bit more out of Bo Bichette, but Garrell Jr. had a really good night. Same with Matty Chapman. He had a big home run, uh, and Zach Collins just continues to play amazing for the Blue Jays uh, as uh, he has uh, another amazing night, 375 average. I mean, he's just... Been a really hot bat for the Toronto Blue Jays since we put him into the lineup. But 
That's it for the JFR, guys. Second time recording this guy because, you know, I forgot to press the record button. Uh, but finally, we got it done. So thank you very much for watching. Next series, the Toronto Blue Jays are going up against is the Boston Red Sox. So it should be a pretty exciting series as Yossi Kanichi will be starting for the Toronto Blue Jays. So we'll have to see how well he does in his second outing against the Red Sox. But for now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.